Brought to you by the Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality, how to complete the U.S. EPA RECRA Subtitle C Site Identification Form, EPA Form 8700-12. This form can be found online at www.deq.state.ok.us. On the home page, hover your mouse over the Land Protection drop-down menu. Click Forms. On the next page, click the Hazardous Waste Forms link. On the Hazardous Waste Forms page, the first link provides the 8700 form and instructions on how to complete it. The second link provides the form only. All businesses that generate hazardous waste are required to make hazardous waste determinations and track how much what hazardous waste they generate on a monthly basis. Both large quantity generators, LQGs and small quantity, quantity generators, SQGs, are required to obtain an EPA ID number by completing the 8700-12 form. In Section 1, Reason for Submittal, mark all boxes that apply. If this is the first time you are submitting the form, mark Initial Notification. If you are updating information, mark Subsequent Notification. If you are submitting a biennial report, mark Hazardous Waste Report. Section 2, EPA Site ID Number. If this is the first time you're submitting the form, you do not yet have an EPA ID number. Leave this blank. If you're updating information or are submitting a biennial report, fill out your EPA ID number here. Section 3, Site Name. Please ensure this section is completed with the official facility name and correct spelling. Section 4, Site Location Information. The street address must be a physical location. Roll route, P.O. boxes, and directional addresses are not acceptable. EPA site ID numbers are based on physical location. Once a location receives a number, it will always have that number. If a company moves, it will need to obtain a new number associated with the new address. Section 5, Site Land Type. This describes the location's land type and must be designated. Section 6, the North American Industrial Classification System, NAICS, code for the site. The NAICS code must be provided. Section 7, Site Mailing Address. If your company requires mail codes or any other information not requested in this section, be sure to include it to ensure a deliverable address for all correspondence. Section 8, Site Contact Person. This is the person with whom the ODEQ will address any questions regarding generator status, compliance, inspections, fees, reporting, etc. Section 9. Legal owner and operator of the site. The legal owner is the owner of the physical location. The operator is the company that is operating at the physical location. Section 10. Type of regulated waste activity, you must mark yes or no for all current activities as of the submission date of this form. Complete additional boxes as instructed. Subpart A, hazardous waste activities. The three generator types, LQGs, SQGs, and conditionally exempt small quantity generators, CEs, SQGs, are based on the total amount of waste generated in a month. Generator activity. Determining generator status requires detailed knowledge of the facility operations. A review of documentation may be required. This may include safety data sheets, recycling and disposal documentation, and other paperwork. All hazardous waste streams must be included. Waste recycled on site must be included in generator status, determinations if there is any storage, even temporary, prior to recycling. A short-term generator requires an explanation of the waste generation in the comments sections, section 13, of this form. In Oklahoma, short-term generators that generate as an LQG must submit a disposal plan, applicable quarterly and biennial reports, and associated fees. Number three applies to United States importers of hazardous waste. Number four applies to mixed waste generators. Transporters of hazardous waste require further documentation provided to the Oklahoma Corporation Commission. Transfer facilities are locations used for transporting hazardous waste. This includes loading docks, parking areas, and areas where waste is held. Transfer stations are facilities engaged in transferring waste from one container to another. Both activities require additional information provided to ODEQ. 
Mark yes if you treat, store, or dispose of hazardous waste in Oklahoma. Mark yes if you recycle hazardous waste in Oklahoma. Mark yes if your facility contains an exempt boiler and or industrial furnace, not a space heater. Mark yes if the facility is involved in underground injection control in Oklahoma. Mark yes if your facility receives hazardous waste from off-site. Subpart B, Universal Waste Activities. You are a large quantity handler of universal waste only if you handle 5,000 kilograms, 11,023 pounds or more of universal waste. All types of universal waste are listed on this slide. Mark yes if you are a destination facility for universal waste. Subpart C, Used Oil Activities. A used oil transporter is anyone who collects used oil from more than one generator and transports it, as well as the owners and operators of used oil transfer facilities. Transfer facilities are any facility where shipments of used oil are held for more than 24 hours and no longer than 35 days during the normal course of transportation. This includes loading docks, parking areas, storage areas, etc. Used oil processor and or refiner. A processor is a facility that processes used oil. This means chemical or physical operations designed to produce from used oil or make used oil more amenable for the production of fuel oils, lubricants, or other used oil derived products. Processing includes, but is not limited to, blending used oil with virgin petroleum products, blending used oils to meet the fuel specification, filtration, simple distillation, chemical or physical separation, and re refining. Off specification used oil burners are facilities where used oil not meeting the requirements in 40 CFR 279.11 is burned for energy recovery in authorized devices, not a space heater. Normal used oil generators are not used oil fuel marketers unless the generator performs the analytical test to determine if used oil is on or off specification if it is going to be burned for energy recovery. See Table 1 in 40 CFR 279.11. Dot 11. Eligible Academic Entities, Subpart D. This section is only for college or universities or affiliates of the same. Section 11, Description of Hazardous Waste. Oklahoma does not have any non-federal ha hazardous waste, so only subsection A needs to be completed. List all hazardous waste codes generated at your location. If you need more space, use Section 13. Comments on the next page or attach a separate sheet of paper with additional codes. Section 12, Notification of Hazardous Secondary Material Activity. Oklahoma adopted the federal definition of hazardous secondary material and it will be in effect as of September 2016. Section 13, Comments. Please include any additional information in this section, including additional waste codes from Section 11 or information that be, may be relevant to your notification. Section 14, Certification. Please read the certification statement carefully. This statement is to be signed by the person who completed or reviewed the form for accuracy and correctness. This person must be in a position qualified to sign for the facility. The name and official title of the person signing the form must be legible. More than one person may sign the form. If you are submitting a Part A permit application, all owners and operators must sign the form. Unsigned or ineligible information in this section will result in a rejection of the form. Addendum to the Site Identification Form, Notification of Hazardous Secondary Material Activity. This section of the form will apply in Oklahoma after September 2016. If you are notifying that you will manage hazardous secondary material, please call ODEQ Data Management at 405-702-5176. Once the form is complete, mail the original signature copy to Oklahoma Department of Environmental Quality, Land Protection Division, Hazardous Waste Data Management, P.O. Box 1677, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, 73101-1677. If you have any questions, staff members can be reached at 405-702-5100 or contact Christina Koffel directly at 405 702-5176.